And a very good evening to you all. I hope you have a full fridge and a full set of fingernails for the weekend's action to come. Will the Celtic Tigers roar? Well, we will find out tomorrow and on Sunday, but the nerves already beginning to build for the former Wales captain, Jan Evans, the former Ireland centre, Paddy Wallace. Welcome to both of you. Um, so much to talk about, but only mm. one place to start, and that is obviously the quarter-final action. Yeah. Um, two wins in 30 meetings with South Africa. Mm -hmm. How on earth are Wales going to pull this off? Uh, the last one was a win to Wales, though, and they'll take that. Um, the question for Wales is how much is left in the tank after being really physical affairs all the way through the pool games, um, where they have enough to play another physical game against a, a, a South African side that prides himself for the likes of Diaga and Etzebeth on their physicality. Um, I think the biggest lesson to be learned from the, the, the loss to Australia is to be clinical, take the points that are on offer. The game ebbs and flows so much in the modern international game in particular. You have to make sure you take the points and keep that scoreboard ticking over every time. You can't be becalmed as Wales were at one time in the opposition 22 and not get anything away from it. You have to get the points, particularly against South Africa, and uh, that's what we're aiming to do and make the right decisions under stress and that's the biggest challenge at quarter-final stages and that is something that Ireland did very well last weekend against the French but they have lost some key key individuals um, how do you assess their chances against Argentina have they got the personnel and the belief to come through this challenge oh, I certainly think they have the belief devastating news to for Paul O'Connell to be out of the squad now uh, good news on, on Johnny Sexton he'll, he'll be fit to, to lace up his boots which is fantastic Paul will hopefully still remain within the squad be a presence in the dressing room, provide that leadership. But as uh, Joe has been able to do over the last few years, he's developed a, a squad mentality that the next guy up fills, fills in and, uh, and raises his game to, to a new level. And they haven't been uh, too affected by injuries in the past, so hopefully that'll still be the same come Sunday against Argentina, who are playing some incredible rugby this yeah. World Cup. So it's going to be a very tough... Uh, tough game I'm really looking forward to it certainly certainly we'll all agree with that and the final quarter final of course see Scotland taking on uh, the Wallabies many people sort of much fancy side Australia given the way that they've been playing Rory Lawson the former Scotland captain is also with us this evening he'll be commentating on the game uh, in a few moments time but Scotland as we say perhaps the longest of odds to make it through to the semi-finals have you popped a pound on them this week though Rory why not Alex it's Scotland's Rugby World Cup final and what a challenge for them ultimately Australia are the form team in this World Cup I and mean, come out of that pool of death um, in an incredibly strong position however Scotland rocked a little bit by the disciplinary um, punishments for Ross Ford and Johnny Gray but they just got on with it ultimately they know that they have to go out there put in the performance of the World Cup the performance of their lives in what is the biggest game many of these guys will have faced in order to win they're going to have to soak up wave after wave of Australian attack. They have the ability to do that. They need to tighten up some defensive frailties. And when they get the ball, they have to be clinical. Take the opportunities, get the scoreboard ticking. But most of all, come out of the blocks like a bat out of hell and get into the Australians from early doors. A little bit of meatloaf inspiration from Rory Lawson. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm sure the French will be looking for any kind of inspiration they can find. The mutiny is brewing, though, apparently, uh, according to some reports. Have they got any hope? But if you can discount in, uh, in a ter turmoil from any team, it's France. They've used this before to galvanise them. Think back to the World Cup 2011 with Marc Livermore as well. So they will, but they were fairly abject in that second half against, against uh, against Ireland and New Zealand are coming to the ball nicely they, if they can reduce the number of turnovers they concede in I think so they have enough potency in that back line in particular yeah. uh, to see more of the finishing line here okay New Zealand very settled very harmonious and actually that is something that Edinburgh have been working very hard on as well throughout the course of this season earlier this week Graham Simmons came up here to have a little look at the team bonding who are the fine minds at High Flying Edinburgh? Are the brains in the backs? Or is the foresight to be found up front? Time to ask some searching questions. And batting for the backs, the well-hydrated Jack Cuthbert, the well-groomed Phil Burley, the shapely Christine, and the sunny Michael Allen. For the forwards, the inscrutable Hamish Watson, Dark Horse Jamie Ritchie, the unexpected Neil Cochran, hello, and the ever-cheerful Roddy Grant. Can you spell rhythm? Yes. Yep. <laughs> R-O-I. T-H-M. No. No. No, 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 that's not it. R-T-H-Y-M. R-H-Y-T. No, no, it's not. R is it not just M? R-H-Y-T-H-M. What is four cubed plus four squared plus four? Four cubed. Four times four, sixteen. Sixteen times sixteen. Thirty-two. You're on your own here, mate. Four. Times four is 16, <laughs> times four is... This is yours. Yeah. <laughs> what was it, plus 
Plus four square. Plus four square, which is 16, which is... 72. 20, oh, no, 24. Plus... 80 plus 4 is 84. He's good, isn't he? Nice, Jamie. <laughs> Muck and Mull. Inner Hebrides or Outer Hebrides? <laughs> Straight past the wicketkeeper. <laughs> One, two, three. Outer. Let's go. Oh. Outer. Be out. Outer Hebrides. Just inner. Inner. You sure? Yeah. No, but in a thing. In a, we'll go in a. <laughs> You're right, it is in. <laughs> Last one, can you sing the chorus, please, of the world in union? You, you lead it off. The whole thing? or Just the, the chorus. <laughs> the world, I'm, I'm, world in union. <laughs> one world. Very good. Has one. Oh, not very Has one. Has one. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Jack. Good stuff. That's me. We're kind of hoping for words, really. Yeah. <laughs> as far as anybody could remember, or indeed care, the numbers were just too close to count. So perhaps it's the balance and the sense of brotherhood that's working so well either way. The Edinburgh mix is looking very tasty indeed. I think it's fair to say that Dame Kerry Takana would be absolutely appalled with that harmonisation. We'd never have that problem in Wales, would we? Uh, one of them sounds like Paloma Faith, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a compliment. Anyway, let's get back to the rugby. And in terms of Edinburgh, I mean, good start to this season. But if you look back at recent seasons, not perhaps underachieving, but certainly not overachieving either. Do things feel different this time around? And if so, why? Well, they've started off strongly. Um, they will hope to maximise during this Rugby World Cup period. They've been as, fact, uh, as effective as some other teams would have been. Um, it, they're a team that's very pragmatic. They go on a, you know, they've lost a front row. They're still very solid up front. Um, they're fairly, you know, in terms of the way they approach the game, they like to suffocate teams as well. Less moving parts than most. So not quite as affected when they do have players pull out and sign. But so, Alan Solomons has conjured something up here where he's gone and made it very difficult to play against Edinburgh. And they've now generally some significant momentum going into the European games and if he can generate enough wins it put him in really strong position going to the latter part of the season yeah what about Ulster uh, where will they feel they can get an advantage this evening well I think you know Jan hit the nail on the head there Edinburgh are now a very structured set piece dominated team that rely on good field position so Ulster have to do the basics well if their front row uh, their their set piece their line out has to function well and they need to exit well from their own half to, de to develop that field position, which they did very poorly whenever they last played away from home at the Scarlets. Yeah. So that's something that, uh, that'll that fall in the hands of Paul Marshall winning his 150th cap. Uh, he'll want to improve on that performance that he put in over in uh, Clint Yeah, they've certainly got far far up wide you're going to add Yeah, to that. it's something you, that, that Alistair will have to be keen on to improve that accuracy, and they were part of that aspect against, um, uh, against the Scarlets. And you think back to Edinburgh's win against the Ospreys here, in the, in the last round. Um, the Ospreys were quite happy to play kicking game until the second half and then they started trying to counter-attack ball in hand and that's what anybody enjoyed. They pulled him into this game like a boa constrictor, just waiting for the moment to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze, sit in the opposition 22, work the driving line outs, work the scrums as well. It's a big part of, of anybody's game. So this game might wind up being we have a blinks first. Yeah. Now I know Ulster have far more attacking weapons available to them and bigger bigger set piece than the Ospreys had and some strike weapons out wide with Gil Gil Gilroy who's outstanding form already this season. But Ulster have to be careful they get drawn into a, into a loose game and allow Ulster um, Edinburgh to dominate territory yeah. of the game. Good stuff, Jens. Thank you very much. I'm sure everyone here has been noticing what's been going on across the way in Glasgow and the fact that they are now champions. Well, I'm sure we're going to learn something about Edinburgh's chances this evening. Here we go then here at Murrayfield with match commentary from Rory Lawson, Tyrone Howe and Mark Robson. Ah, uh, Ulster versus the Scots. They have their own language, you know. It's Ulster Scots, of course. So let us hope we have a purple Dean. That's an amazing event. And let's see who gets the gruppet hult a firm grip and finds a handle mare a wee bit extra rugby and celtic language lessons now here are the teams 
Edinburgh first and changes for the win over the Ospreys last time out. Hamish Watson, superb off the bench against the Welsh region, starts this one. Nasi Manu is back after injury at number eight. Rory Sutherland's a late withdrawal. We hear he may have been called up to the Scotland squad. TBC, Alan Dell is in. In the back line, just one change from a fortnight ago, and it's at scrum half, where Nathan Foyles is promoted from the bench ahead of Sean Kennedy to partner Phil Burley. Greg Tonks at fullback was man of the match against the Ospreys. To the visiting Ulster team, and a couple of key men who missed the seven-try thrashing of Treviso return lock, Franco van der Merve and number eight Nick Williams. Rob Herring is the World Cup window captain. In the back line, a big day for scrum half Paul Marshall. It's his 150th appearance. Luke Marshall is injured, so young Sam Arnold steps in. Craig Gilroy, two tries against Treviso, signed a new two-year contract this week. To the benches, and for Edinburgh, Will Hellu is back from Tongan World Cup duty. And for Ulster, Ian Humphreys returns after a hamstring problem. Well, Ulster had their whoopsies on the road last season, losing at Zebra and the Dragons, for example. Much better at the Kingspan this season. Ulster have had two home wins so far, but their one-away game was a bit of a shocker. Ulster poor against a Scarlets team that were reduced to 14 men three times. They'll be hoping for a lot better here in Scotland. Graham Simmons is with their coach, Neil Doak. Neil, we know how fabulous Ulster's home record is in Belfast. Is your away form, and particularly nights like this, do you think going to be the key to your success of your season? Oh, definitely at this early part of the season. You know, it's um, we came away here last year and we're a little bit ill-disciplined and we were fortunate enough to come away with a win. You know, their kicker missed a few kicks, so tonight's discipline is key and, and whenever we get in the right areas, you know, it's important that we get points on the board. Thanks for your time. No problem. Well, Edinburgh have made a flying start to the season results-wise. Three wins, but last season Murrayfield fell short of Fortress status. Edinburgh's league form at home last season was average. They managed to lose to all four Irish provinces. Signs of an antidote when they beat Leinster in round one. And a win against the Ospreys, too. Assistant coach Steve Scott is on the mic. What's been the key to the early autumnal surge, Steve? Yeah, I think we've had a, a good uh, pre-season, we had tough games against Romania and we had a, a tough game against Ulster. Uh, so we prepared well for the start of the season and we just sort of took it on uh, for the first three games. And what needs to be done to maintain the good work against another top four side? Yeah, we need to be really accurate tonight, we need to be disciplined and when points are on, on offer we need to take them. Thanks, Steve. Good luck. And there's the Edinburgh captain for tonight, Mike Coleman. The referee, the man in the middle, is Dudley Phillips, his third pro game of this season. Three yellow cards he has administered. There's Nasi Manu, the co-captain of the Highlanders side that won the... Super Rugby title last season and quite an acquisition for this Edinburgh team. Round three of the Pro 12 was a fortnight ago and both Edinburgh and Ulster chalked up commendable victories. Edinburgh winning all three, Ulster looking to find a vein of form away from the Kingspan Stadium. And Edinburgh get us underway and it's the man who's just signed that new two-year deal Craig Gilroy scored a try against Treviso a couple of weeks ago that's an early marker for try of the season Paul Marshall his box kicking must be better than it was against the Scarlets when in the words of a former Ulster captain Ulster were horrendous carry from Fraser McKendie. McKenzie who was a a candidate for man of the match in that Ospreys game. Greg Tonks got the award, but Mackenzie played mighty good rugby on that occasion. And a strong start to Paul Marshall's 150th game. Nice box kick there. Good chase down the right wing by Craig Gilroy. And he, he just ushered Nassi Manu towards the touchline. He did very well to get his toe over the touchline. Receiver. Black, take a step. Go back. 
Nasi Manu taking that one cleanly and Ulster's line out ball and an early penalty to Ulster. Ulster's 53rd line out, would you believe that was, on their own ball this season. They've only lost three and that's a pretty impressive statistic. Yeah, that's incredibly strong. And you look at the experience in that second row with Dan Tui, Franco van der Merwe. They're obviously at the forefront of this pack and the experience. Add into that the back row. Roger Wilson, Nick Williams, two big men in that back row with a bundle of experience. And this is an Ulster, Ulster side who will come here with clear intentions to go away with something of value tonight. Well, Ulster's performance against the Scarlets was what they call triple critical. That's whenever all your biorhythms are out of sync. They need to find sync tonight against Edinburgh. Nelson with a beautifully weighted oh, kick that was... really puts Tonks under pressure. And Damien Hoyland manages to clear up. But that is what you call the archetypal bomb from Peter Nelson. But Ulster, they give away the penalty. This time, a penalty apiece. Edinburgh will be delighted to exit the 22. Great up and under, putting them on, under all sorts of pressure. Ulster's back line completely flat. Obvious what they're going to do, but you know, a good a good clear up from Edinburgh to relieve the pressure because it was the penalty from the line out. Alan Solomons will not want to give Ulster any cheap penalties <laughs> or any cheap opportunities of points. That's a cracking first high ball there from Peter Nelson, a converted full-back wing, and he actually chased that box kick. I did him an injustice. Uh, he chased the box kick and made that tackle. So he did a very, very strong start. Yeah, Peter Nelson's third start at 10 this season. Injuries to Sam Windsor, signed from receiver step, receiver Worcester. Step. Ian Humphreys is on the bench tonight. He's been carrying a hamstring problem, but back in action, hopefully, from the pine at some stage. And it's Bresler who takes that line out for Edinburgh. The carry from Hamish Watson. He was a Scottish tartan whirling dervish when he came off the bench against the Ospreys. Ten carries, all of them highly impressive. He made metres on every single occasion and almost single-handedly did enough to put the Ospreys away in that game. Here's Nathan Fowles. And you will find Nasi Manu carrying a lot of ball for Edinburgh tonight. He must be a good player to keep Cornell Dupre out of the team. Here's Andre Strauss, his brothers on the bench for Ireland against Argentina in the semi-final of the quarter, <laughs> one wishes, quarter-final of the World Cup on Sunday. Bresler carries. Here is Files. Phil Burley at out half. Ulster trying to get up quickly at Sam Arnold, the 19-year-old who advances, and the referee Dudley Phillips is playing the advantage to Edinburgh. No advantage, because eight off his feet here. Number eight off his Packer. feet, he says. Is that, that is Nick Williams, his third game back after an eight-week ban at the end of last season. Nice start from Edinburgh. They rode their luck a little bit. Phil Burley's kick partly charged down, but it... Uh, Andre Strauss was the quickest to react and they managed to get some nice face play there. They're very direct early doors. They want to play rugby in Ulster's half and they want to take their opportunities when they come round. And obviously this one, the first one to Greg Tonks. It's classic Edinburgh rugby, just going through very basic plays, strong ball carriers getting across the game line, then a speculative little punt, which they managed to regain possession, and they will thrive off opposition's mistakes and try and convert all of these penalties into points. Greg Tonks, 3-3 three and three against the Ospreys. Nick Williams has been conceding a lot of penalties this season in his appearance, a six all told. And Greg Tonks, he hasn't got the Owen Farrell. You talking to me, Luke, has he? It's pretty straightforward. And he continues the form on from the Ospreys game. Does the Edinburgh fullback. He had 19 carries against the Ospreys, made a big meterage man of the match in that game. But a lot of the kicks in that match were long distance kicks. So he had a lot of land in front of him before he returned to civilization. He didn't half, and that's a great way to start. He's very he's got a very long kick out of hand and very good off the tee as well. And to be able to get the scoreboard ticking after a relatively nervy start, he'll be very happy with that. Peter Nelson's restart, and it is Tonks. Yeah, there was some brain pickling stop, stop, kicking. Stop in that Ospreys game. Would you believe 81 kicks from hand in that match two weeks ago? And that one is launched straight into touch. And Ulster looking to take the quick one from the point at which the kick was taken. 
coach's frustration there, isn't it? That you score three points, get it on the scoreboard, take the kick off, and then put the ball out when it's passed back into the 22. You see there, Tonks to Fowles, Fowles to Burley, straight out, and the line out. Look at this line out position for Ulster. And of course, it doesn't matter that it's the second pass, it's the pass that takes the ball into the 22, and it's well taken in the line out by Dan Tui who might have been a little bit miffed that uh, Mike McCarthy was called up by Joe Schmidt into the Ireland squad, because you might have thought that Dan Tui was maybe the next cab off the rank, but Joe Schmidt didn't quite see it that way. In goes Nick Williams, the 2013 Irish Players, Player of the Year, Peter Nelson, looks for Arnold, that looked forward, and it very clearly was. Edinburgh defended very well inside 10 there. Pre-rehearsed move from Ulster, trying to bring Andrew Trimble down that 10 channel. That's the man Edinburgh have to stop today for the Ulster go forward, Nick Williams, such a strong ball carrier, a huge threat for Ulster, and they managed to get him to the ground early there, which was a huge positive. But just picking up on your Dan Tui comment, I saw him, we, we were obviously at, in Dublin for the, the pre-season game, Scotland against Ireland, and he felt he was right very very close to selection so he'll be hugely disappointed he's a terrific asset for Neil Doak and his coaches to get back into this squad big ball carrier good line out man an all round good guy he was in the Gloucester Academy when I came up uh, when I was when I was in Gloucester and he, I could tell at that stage he was he was a, a real prospect well, this uh, scrum will be interesting because the Ospreys won four scrum penalties in that game a fortnight ago uh, although the Edinburgh pack did very much get on top the longer the game progressed. The Edinburgh pack did look as if they'd been drugged for the first 25 minutes, or maybe they'd had a, a drama or two the night before the game. Certainly took them a while to, in inverted commas, sober up, but when they did, they took the Ospreys apart. And remember a late change at Loosehead, Alan Dell with the bodybuilders build. I remember the days when props used to be chubby. Nathan Files. Solid scrum from Edinburgh. Stay red, stop, stop. Phil Burley didn't really catch all of that. A bit of a mini slice off the outside of the boot. Andrew Trimble there. Now Ulster's most capped player, breaking the record previously held by Paddy Wallace. When you see so much written about scrums going down and the amount of time spent in scrums, that scrum was just utterly locked out, an immovable object against an irresistible force. And that will give Edinburgh a lot of heart because, you know, this is an experienced Ulster pack who'll be trying to get the upper hand, particularly in the, the set piece this evening, to try and build a big platform for Nelson and the rest of the Ulster backs. Rob Herring's had a good start of the season, captain in the World Cup window. Man of the match against Treviso, scored a try against the Ospreys. Here is Stuart McCluskey, who has possibly Ball! been Ulster's outstanding player through those first three matches. Here is Marshall. Fantish knock on. Knock on by Ulster. Peter Nelson again. That's the, the second time Ulster have tried to oh, work that one. inside channel. And we know that Ulster do like to try and get Fantish both over. wingers involved as much as they can in the middle of the field. Back goes Louis Ludic, and good chase there by Tom Brown, up so quickly there, full of enthusiasm, the Edinburgh right winger, and the result of all that enthusiasm is Edinburgh, who look really up for this game, they get the penalty. Turnover, ball, pass to Phil Burley, kicked into the real estate behind, and that man, Tom Brown on the chase, the intent that he showed, he didn't wait for the guys around him, he saw that Louis Ludic was going to be isolated, and there he has got him to deck early, next man in was Mike Coleman, I think, went beyond the ball, and then suddenly, there on the front foot, I think the referee gave it for going off feet at the breakdown there, Trimble going off his feet, and that is a fantastic lift for the Edinburgh defence. Tom Brown, he's actually studying for his commercial pilot's license, as is Stuart McAnally in the Edinburgh squad. We'll soon have a squadron here. And he's also studying for human, a human biology degree, so he's a pretty busy man whenever you combine that with a professional Time rugby off, career. Time for a fresh haircut, though, today, <laughs> by the looks of things. Yeah, get that hair out of your eyes. Yeah. He hasn't time for a haircut. Are you surprised they put it into the corner there? You know, Tonks has got the distance, he's obviously striking the ball nicely. Might have been an opportunity just to have a go at the post, stay down here, even if they, if they miss it out. 
Yeah, I think so. I, I guess he, he's obviously made the call on that, and no, the, the Edinburgh own Pack own will want a rumble. You know, knowing forwards the way I do, they'll be very keen to state I, I their intent, seen so get in there. Contribute. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't quite pick up what Dudley Phillips was saying there, but uh, a player has spoken yeah. to him. I haven't seen it, so I can't contribute. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 Maybe an incident of a, a foul play somewhere along the line, but... OK, Bob, we need a replacement for one red to head it HIA. Well, first of all, Alan Dell is off for a head injury. Assessment. Alan Dell, who was in the original uh, World Cup 46 no. man no. squad selected by yes. Vern Cotter. Just, just don't. And because of Sutherland's withdrawal, this man was brought in at very short notice, the up. Scotland A International, the former head boy at Kelso High, Grant Shields, who Rory Lawson played with at the Falcons. Yeah, Grant, he's a, he's a good player, good loose head prop, dynamic around the field, and a, and a strong scrummager. So, Obviously, they'll be disappointed. Alan Dell, you well, see the okay, specimen so that he is. He's, he is in the new age of prop forwards, isn't he? I mean, he has a solid protein diet by the looks of things and a big man, but he'll hopefully come back soon. Props with six packs, an absolute disgrace to the profession. The Ponty Pool front row were never like that, but they could scrummage. And Ulster have got their hands on the ball here. Good work from Rob Herring, continuing his good early season form there, pumping the legs. Stop, 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 one. On the line now. Peter Nelson goes long, and here's Tom Brown, who was on the chase a few moments ago. Now Greg Tonks, he runs into Dan Tui, the formidable bulk of the Ulster second row forward. Again, Ulster jumping out of the line quickly and making sure the pressure is on Nasi Manu. Nathan Files switching the play to Phil Burley and Nick Williams this time is pressing. Now Tom Brown. Nathan Files. It is noticeable the Ulster line speed, which was singularly lacking against the Scarlets in Wales a couple of weeks back. Nathan Files, Nasi Manu, an opportunity perhaps on that side of the pitch. There is space for Edinburgh here. Nice timing of the pass from Greg Tonks, and Tom Brown showed balletic footwork there to somehow stay in play. Phil Burley, maybe Edinburgh beginning here to sense an opportunity, and again Ulster come flying out of the line through Louis Ludic. Forcing Edinburgh to kick to give the ball away to Peter Nelson, who'd taken up the position that Louis Ludic had vacated. And all of that came off the kick to the corner that you spoke about, Tyrone. Penalty kick to the corner, Edinburgh lost the line out. Ulster cleared their lines, and it was a good counter attack. Tonks initially, big carries in the midfield from Nasi Manu. And off the back of that, we saw Tom Brown tiptoeing his way down the touchline terrifically well, but it was just a slack pass out into the midfield that ended up leading to the breakdown of that move. When you say tiptoeing, it's like a pinball there. Heading off Trimble. It's interesting. Edinburgh really going after the short side. They're playing most of their rugby on one half of the pitch. Players taking the ball off ten and off nine. And then that was the second time they went back to the short side. And on that occasion, they found space in that outer channel. Andrew Trimble will not be too happy with his, his tackle attempt there. Bresler takes that line out ball. Another clean line out. Good line out for uh, Edinburgh. And I hear it. Here's that dervish she was talking about. Helped on his way. It's like he was on a on a rolling tray there, Hamish Watson being driven forward by Nasi Manu, but the wheels have come off that tray now, and the scrummage goes Ulster's way. Edinburgh playing the rugby in the right areas, though they'll be frustrated by that as a <laughs> good carry by Hamish Watson, a lot of front foot, but then the ball just knocked on at that na next breakdown. But Edinburgh are playing all the rugby in the right areas that Alan Solomons will be very very happy. The Ulster side as well, their back three are operating very deep. They're actually inviting Edinburgh to attack them, knowing that they like that kicking game. So that is forcing Edinburgh's hand a little bit. But opportunities, like we saw with Tom Brown, down that right wing will come as a result. They're dropping two or three back into that backfield, anticipating the kicks. He's a freak, really, Hamish Watson. Again, his carrying there is amazing. He looks angry. Maybe someone stole his 
last lemon sherbert because he's up for this in fact the whole edinburgh team there does seem to be a, a ripple of enthusiasm running through them certainly exemplified by that chase by tom brown and here is paul marshall of a good scrummage for an ulster peter nelson putting the ball through and edinburgh just pumping it forward here's paul marshall's 150th appearance for ulster tonight Tom Brown stepping again and runs into Paul Marshall who made the first tackle there here's Nathan Files and again Ulster coming out of the line making that commitment making the read through Andrew Trimble Files under a bit of pressure there so a little bit of a floaty pass from Files from Rochdale Burley again he's he's hurried into making his decision here's peter nelson has played out half the ulster a team and his club dungannon so he's not a total stranger to the position he's been forced to play in this season and at the breakdown it's edinburgh who continue this beaverish start and win the turnover christine the man to win that turnover apparently used to be a number eight in his school days and those days weren't that long ago for the 21 year old and he he showed in that white channel tackle up he gets to his feet jackal over the top of it and in those wide channels there's your opportunity did very very well to to fight in that breakdown classic spin and poach technique wasn't it ulster having to play all the rugby just inside their own halfway line edmund really just keeping the pressure on and the risk you run is that you know if you if you give away a penalty in that area you know tonks we've already seen he's got a good lengthy boot on him and he can punish you but also they need to get the possession and the the position of the, this match much more in their favor neil cochran and this time it's fraser mckenzie and they set them all it's just been confirmed from a high-ranking official that Rory Sutherland has been called into the Scottish squad Hamish Watson carrying arm out from Dudley Phillips another penalty coming for Edinburgh here and Paul Marshall makes an aggressive hit on Tom Brown but it's Dan Tui he's been penalized here for side entry that's a silly penalty to give away just outside your 22. Tui needs to keep his discipline, but it's a great drive from Edinburgh. They're cohesive, they've got the ball at the back, they're rumbling on. And Tui just, I mean, that's an obvious one right in front of the referee. And who's in the middle of that again? Hamish, oh, there he is, there he is, look at him. <laughs> Big, young, powerful man, great carrier, very good on the ground. And uh, obviously, Edinburgh, terrific. They've got Roddy Grant as well, rotated this evening. Give, gives an opportunity for Hamish Watson to go out. He's had four carries already tonight. Terrific. That's, I mean, he's had a very, very strong start to the game. And once again, Edinburgh can have the opportunity to keep the scoreboard ticking. Tonks in that extended squad for the World Cup. Three Edinburgh men on the Scotland side to take on South Africa. WP now, Ali Dickinson and Dave... Denton, six points nil to Edinburgh, no Ross Ford in that Scotland team, controversially suspended alongside Johnny Gray. I've no doubt that they'll find a little pocket in their hotel in South East London to be watching this game, watch, watch the boys go out there, and um, they'll, be, they'll be looking forward to coming back to the club, but not for a couple of weeks yet, hopefully. WTNL's got a great try scoring record for Edinburgh, Scotland would love him a notch one against the box in that quarter final that's for sure peter nelson oh good take by a wee man paul marshall there doing well now here's franco van der Merve. Also, haven't seen too much of the ball. Good hands from Dan Tui. And here's Craig Gilroy. Lands in the arms of Phil Burley. And now it's Tom Brown. Paul Marshall drills it low. And here is Damien Hoyland. A very fine skateboarder, I was told, of the captain's run. 
yesterday in his youth. A little bit like the Ospreys game in the first 20 minutes or so. There was a lot of long-range kicking, and there's been plenty of that so far. Off goes Phil Burley. That's Hoyland. Files again, Phil Burley. Plenty of white shirts to stop his progress there. Nathan Files again, Tom Brown, the right winger, finds himself on the, the left wing now and brought down by Callum Black. And Ulster know they've got to get their hands on Hamish Watson early because he is causing all sorts of chaos uh, to this Ulster defence. But on this occasion, there's been an infringement and there's a scrummage to this Ulster side. Oh, that's a close call. Uh, Neil Cochrane, he's, he's called for him being in front of the ball carrier. I thought Hamish Watson had done incredibly well to get, a, get away from it. We'll see on the replay here. Nick Williams up in the carry. Oh, he's... I think that's a tough call. Rory, I mean, I mean, Williams just doesn't... I mean, I didn't see the hooker actually impede anybody. It's more the, the, the ineffectual hit from Williams that didn't put him to ground. Totally agree. It wasn't like a defender was taken out by Cochrane. I felt he didn't impede Williams making that tackle. He missed the tackle, spun out of it, and actually I thought he would have been away there. Another strong carry from Hamish Watson. Well, most of the play in this first 20 minutes has been inside the Ulster half. What are they going to do to get out of it? Graham Simmons is with the forwards coach, Alan Clark. Alan, one quarter, five penalties, four at the ruck. Is that where you're turning your hair out at the moment, Slaney? Yeah, um, obviously it's going against us there. We've got to be better. Uh, got to interpret how that's been refereed by, by Dudley. Um, also the fact that you know we've had a couple of good positions to strike from. We haven't retained possession of the ball. Um, the opposite to that is that when Ed Murph got into our half, they got a couple of cheap penalties and there's six points in the scoreboard. And it's not really the start we were after, obviously. Uh, we've got to get a bit of better composure and accuracy and discipline. They don't give you very much, do they, Edinburgh? How creative are you going to have to be tonight to break them down? Yeah, like, I think patience is going to be important. Uh, when to strike for those opportunities and when to recognise what numbers Edinburgh have in the front line. Uh, they certainly play a pragmatic style of rugby. Uh, we're fully aware of that. Um, but it's been working for them. Uh, it's important that we, uh, we do the simple things well and hopefully take our opportunities when we get up into their, uh, their red zone. Well, you're there right now, Alan. Thanks for your time. Mark, back to you. Yeah, might get an opportunity here. A classic Paul Marshall break. He's inclined to to do that at least three or four times a game. Paul Marshall, you've got to keep a very, very close eye on Batman. It's fair to say Mike Coleman scrummaged a little bit too long there. Paul Marshall, like a whip it off the back of that scrum and good cover tackle by Tonks in the end. You see there, Coleman stays down a little bit too long, perhaps due to the threat and power of that Ulster pack. Marshall is rapid off the back but nice little coverage there, however, they have conceded a penalty and it's now the Ulster line-out deep in the Edinburgh Territory. Great, great covering from, uh, from the scrum half, Nathan Foz. He was standing on the far side of the scrum, had a really track back. The Ulster line-out, as it often does, again going well. Clean ball to work with and clean ball to set them all off. Referee playing an advantage here to Ulster. Paul Marshall has it. Now, what's Peter Nelson going to do? It's that high ball we see so often in these uh, situations to the far corner. Ulster have it through Ludic. Can they drive Ludic over? Can they get the bodies in behind him? Not quite. But remember, Dudley Phillips was playing an advantage there. Stuart McCluskey showing his muscularity. A little bit of tete a tete. Clearly a tactic that Ulster have come with to be able to challenge with a high ball in that area. Obviously, king of the skies, Andrew Trimble out on that left wing. And they, they're targeting him. Tonks did well. Initially, they, Edinburgh managed to hold down Louis Ludic. But that man there, Stuart McCloskey, such a big source of go-forward for Ulster. We've, that, I think that's the first time I've heard you say his name tonight. Robo. Yeah, he's had a cracking season. McCloskey, he's the, the Rambo of this... Ulster midfield 
Ulster's Young Player of the Year, Stuart McCluskey. He's a sort of uh, modern-day centre. He's an absolute unit, and he's been the guy that's been giving Ulster the go-forward in their best performances so far this season. Really exploded on the scene last season, but you know, it's just the, the size, the pace, and actually really good hands, good balance. And uh, he's a young lad with a big, big future ahead of him. Yeah, unit six foot three, sixteen stone six. Does that qualify as a unit? A big unit. <laughs> <laughs> They're all big units for me, Rob. <laughs> well, he's not taking the kicks tonight. That's interesting. He's been uh, taking the place kicks for most of the season, but his return's not that great. Eight from 15, four from seven against Treviso. So it's Peter Nelson who gets his opportunity, and he's successful with his opener. Six points to three to Edinburgh. Think about Dalendi for South Africa when you see McCloskey, a, a man who's been given the opportunity with the loss of Jean de Villiers, come in, taking his opportunity, and he is, as my papa would say, born when meat was cheap. I think I might have said Scotland play South Africa in the World Cup quarterfinals. Of course, they've already played South Africa, and they play Australia in the quarters. Wales taking on South Africa. Scarlet's good start to the season continues and DTH van der Merve, who has scored four tries in the World Cup, has already opened his account, new signing for the Scarlet's. And you fancy he'll make a huge impact on that uh, Scarlet's team, especially with those injuries to Liam Williams and Scott Williams, they're going to need him. Here's Paul Marshall and Nick Williams throws the ball to nobody in particular, it spins and bounces off the turf, Sam Arnold picks it up and goes, the teenager who made five starts in the World Junior Championships last June, and Fraser McKenzie attempts to pounce there, the ball was loose at the back, now Nelson Manu makes the tackle on him here's Craig Gilroy two tries against Treviso, one of them an absolute cracker but I'll forget the penalty the breakdown is an absolute mess, which is exactly what Edinburgh will want. They're challenging Ulster in the really close exchanges, and they're getting penalties. Ulster not making the right decisions at the breakdown. You're just saying turnover, turnover by the other side. Exactly. That will be completely in the Edinburgh game plan to try and just drag Ulster at the breakdown into a dogfight. Yeah, Ulster's Callum Black there was the man who was penalised, the loose head. You've got a 19 stone number eight for Ulster and you want him to carry, you want to get into the area. Here he is throwing a miss pass off his right hand, as you said to nobody. That is going to have Neil Doak fuming because he is the sort of guy, as a defender, you're thinking, acts as a speed bump, just get in his way, get him to ground as quickly as you can. And he is going forward, you don't want him throwing a double miss pass. Ulster going for three competitive wins in a row against Edinburgh in Scotland, but Edinburgh made a a good start to this one, looking to build on their three wins in a row to start their season. And here is Hamish Watson again. Nick Williams and Roger Wilson try to hold them off the turf. But they've done well, they're Edinburgh to get the ball to ground. And here is Nathan Fowles. And it's Phil Burley. Gosh, there's some height on that ball. Greg Tonks underneath it. Now it's Damien Hoyland. There are four Ulster defenders there, though. Andre Strauss in possession with the drive, and here's Nathan Files. Nasi Manu carries. Dan Tui makes the tackle there as Edinburgh inch their way closer to the line here. The inside ball to Andre Strauss. Good tackle by Louis Ludic. And the ball has been spilled free on the Ulster side, and Callum Black picks it up. In goes Paul Marshall, no ruined Pinar, who's with the Springboks at the World Cup. Hoyland is underneath this one. Tackle, get out. Tackle from Sam Arnold. Luke Marshall has a thumb injury, so that's why he's not available for this game. Darren Cave is away with the uh, Ireland squad at the World Cup, carried by Grant Shields. Fraser McKenzie is penalised this time and Dudley Phillips wants to speak to Mike Coleman, the captain. 
Okay, take the two teams now. The penalty count at the breakdown for me is quite high, okay? Significant number of the penalties has been side entry. I suggest you have a word of the teams, make sure they're coming through the gates, okay? Because it's not acceptable so far, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. Need to get a technician onto the pitch to uh, clean up the steamed up camera that the referee's wearing there. It's, it's misting. Yeah, there's some heavy breathing in that little huddle of three men there, wasn't there? That was a, a breathless moment. And I tell you what, the Ulster pack won't be thanking Paul Marshall. They had to soak up a number of phases defensively there, and he box kicked clear, but straight to, I think it was uh, Damien Hoyland on this left wing to be able to launch the counter-attack again. It was only a fumble from a carry from an Edinburgh man in that Ulster 22 that gave them the opportunity to clear. Ledra starting the season with a surge, three wins. Leinster and the Ospreys here, Treviso on the road. And that doesn't happen very often. Ulster losing a line out. And here's Nasi Manu popping up in midfield like Nick Williams before him at number eight. Not a great pass from Nasi Manu, who has a, a, an Ulster connection. Manu, he won the World Junior Championships in Belfast in 2007. But Ulster recovering the situation. They damaged themselves by losing their own line-out, but now they've won the scrummage. See Nick Williams just a nod of the head to the Edmure opposition. He knew exactly, he was in control of that situation, held the man up in contact. But you know, usually this Ulster line-out is a pretty solid force. But Edinburgh again, that'll give them confidence that they can disrupt set-piece. But you just see the back row guys doing the, the job there, and Williams coming in. When he lies on top of it, there's no chance that ball's coming out, is there? As soon as he heard the, <laughs> the ball called, he was on there. I wouldn't like to be under that, though. Well, Ulster very poor in Wales against the Scarlets. Last time out away from home, the Scarlets have three men binned. Ulster not playing well. They're kicking game notably under par, and they committed a whole raft of cardinal sins in that game. How much will they improve tonight here in Edinburgh? And it's Stuart McCluskey. As you say, we haven't seen too much of the impressive McCluskey this season so far. Well, that's nice footwork from Sean Reedy, getting away from one tackler. Trying to get some front football for this Ulster team that has been sorely lacking in the first half an hour. Peter Nelson, and here is Andrew Trimble, who is absolutely smashed on the gain line there by Fraser McKenzie. Knock on though by Edinburgh, the advantage here to Ulster. Peter Nelson misses out, white shirts. Here is Gilroy. And the ball bounces for Greg Tunks. Nathan Foyles comes racing back and runs into his own fullback there, trying to get himself into position for this ball. And he was almost too enthusiastic there. And he hasn't found touch. Here's Peter Nelson, Ulster down a man. Injured in midfield, off goes Andrew Trimble. Here is Louis Lunick trying to open up this Edinburgh defence. Sam Arnold, nice offload, out of contact there. This is more like it from Ulster. At last, beginning to build their way into this game. Peter Nelson to Nick Williams. You've got to hit Nick Williams quick and early. Paul Marshall to Peter Nelson. And now it is Stuart McCluskey. It's incredibly strong into and through the contact area. He's magnificent at getting his, his arms free in that sort of Sonny Bill Williams style. A danger man, there's no doubt about that. Second rows for Ulster there, working together. Here is Paul Marshall for Nick Williams, the big rumbler, Anton Bresner tackles Nick Williams but he manages to turn his body shape to present the ball and here now is Peter Nelson, Phil Burley tackles his opposite number Tackle! Ulster come in hard here's Marshall again, the men in white working the blind side, this time it's Edinburgh who try to hold Ulster off the floor and they've turned it over what a start to this game, Hamish Watson has made, not just in carrying but now in ripping ball off Ulster man. 
the saviour in the Edinburgh defence there. I tell you, they had to soak up a lot of pressure there, and it all came again off a nudge through from Gilroy, the chase down there. The time there was just to calm things down, and Nathan Fowles possibly showed a little bit of inexperience. He, rather than taking a little bit of time, setting up shop and clearing into touch, he kicked quick and gave a great counter-attacking opportunity to Ulster again that they took. And only that man, Hamish Watson, the saviour on the ground, saved Edinburgh there. He's had a, he's had a heck of a 33 minutes in this game. But interestingly, his, his uh, colleague in the eighth shirt, Nazi Manu, stepped out of the line and allowed Ulster to break through that first line of uh, defence and that actually gave them the impetus to start attacking and it's really the first time that Ulster have been able to string a few faces together and really put Edinburgh under serious pressure but as Alan Clark said on the 20 minute mark they've coughed up the ball when they have got into these attacking zones his brother's with him in Scotland he's playing for Sterling at the moment line out back to full function for Ulster here's Callum Black Neil Cochran tackles him Marshall and a whole phalanx of Ulsterman there coming around the corner at some pace now it's Vian Herbst the South African do another one to a Springbok the one times cap Franco van der Merve and it's Roger Wilson who is penalised this time for playing the man beyond the ball. Ulster finished bottom of the fair play league last season and signs of indiscipline again here tonight. Well he just latched on to the ball carrier, they just did a little pick and go and just unfortunately lost that bind in the back of him, went beyond and took somebody out and again it's just a little, little error but in the wrong part of the pitch for Ulster. Talking about that fair play league last season, red cards for Ulster, sightings, yellows. In fact, they had a red card in the corresponding fixture here last season. Stuart McCluskey was sent off. Ulster still managing to win that game despite that. They also had a yellow card in that game too, the 20 points to 17 success. They'll be pleased though in the last couple of minutes they've actually been able to set up a few attacks in Edinburgh's half which didn't happen in the first 20 or 25 minutes so actually being able to set up camp they're going through a couple of good line outs and actually getting on top of them they'll take confidence from that. Top 14 this weekend to lose against La Rochelle right now Sky Sports 3 red button and the ITM Cup semi-final Canterbury against Taranaki tomorrow 5am Nasi Manu won six provincial titles with Canterbury. That's on Sky Sports 5. And the other semi-final is Wellington against Otago. Straight after that, first semi, 7.30 a.m. Sky Sports 4. And the Curry Cup semi-final. Knockout games all over the place. Golden Lions against the Cheetahs. 12.40 Sky Sports 4. Bad news for Ulster. Dan Tui is off. And Anton Bresler, the other number four, this time for Edinburgh, takes that line out. And the ball is on halfway, and it's the man who loves a bit of workload, Hamish Watson, who carries again. Nathan Files and it's Bresler popping up to help out. Fouls, Nassi Manu, good tackle by the bulky Vian Herbst. Guess who it is, Hamish Watson again, but the tackle was completed and Hamish Watson kept on moving, so you're not allowed to scramble along the turf on your knees in that situation. A wry smile and a couple of words to Dudley Phillips there on his way by to say, I'm not sure I was, sir. <laughs> I think you're not doing your job as an open side flanker if you don't get pinged at least once or twice in the game. Always on the edge, and you know that's a that's a split second decision by the ref. <laughs> Connor, three tries already for them against Zebra. Well on course for a uh, try bonus point success. Glasgow, the champ, uh, the champions, drawing at the moment with the Dragons, ten points. A piece. Chris Vissaro and Renan Landman with the tries there, and the Scarlets 15, Leinster nil. James Davis and DTH Phantom Murray with the tries for the Scarlets, continuing their good start of the season. That's McCluskey, more like it. 
There's the, the power and contact we were talking about. Now Roger Wilson carries. Lewis Stevenson is on for Dan Tui. Marshall. Nassi Manu comes in with, with Neil Cochran there. Marshall again, Christine just looking to get off the blocks in defence. Certainly no lack of enthusiasm about this uh, Edinburgh performance. You can often gauge the enthusiasm by the line speed. Here's Reedy. Bridging from Nick Williams and Ian Hurst gets, as they say in Northern Ireland, absolutely emptied. Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a collective enthusiasm, isn't it, from this Edinburgh team? It really is, and the intensity of the hits down there, the line speed, as you touched on, and just the general collective defensive effort that is there. The, the, the line speed is there, they make the hit, they get the opposition man on the ground. The guys around that area, typically tackler plus one, compete, make it difficult for the opposition to win the ball. The rest of the line create the defensive line and get off again and again. It's been terrific. It's been, a, I mean, it's been a... A story of two defences in many ways, but Edinburgh arguably the, the stronger of the two. It's classic Solomon's rugby. It's very structured, it's very, very competitive. You make life difficult for the opposition. Are you going to score four or five tries in a game? No, but what you're going to do is you're going to thrive in their mistakes and you're going to pick up points and you're going to try and squeeze a win. And that coming from a man, Tyrone Howe, who was coached by Alan Solomon's at Ulster. Set. Incredible stats there. Both sides only missed two tackles. 100 tackles in this match so far. Only four missed in total. That's incredibly good. Uh, well, I think they both went, OK? So we're going to go for a reset. That's the first one today. Did you say use that? Sorry? I was suggesting that it might be oh, used, and uh, then the two props went. You said use yeah, and then the two props that. went. Yeah, the, the referees are, are encouraged to uh, to tell the scrum halves to use the ball now if it's at the number eight feet and it's in play. Okay, so maintain that gap that we've had prior to that. Okay. Thank you. The one thing as well, which is a cornerstone of uh, of Alan Solomon's, is that you've got to make your home a fortress you've got to have pride in your in your own turf in your own fans and you've got to make sure that your your your, your bottom line is that you win your home games uh, that was we were very good when i played under we were excellent at home unfortunately we were pretty dour when we went away but at, at least you've got that fortress mentality to, to i suppose provide a foundation and edinburgh will always be a very tough side here funnily enough edinburgh have lost their last five home matches to Crunch. Irish provinces. I think they're allergic to greens. Crunch. Perhaps, but they're maxing out in this World Cup window. I Five. think, you know, three wins from three at the moment. Tonight, Six. the biggest challenge yet. And in the next couple of weeks, Zebra away, Connet away, Munster home. They've got a fantastic platform to generate a good position in the league. At last, somebody hooks it. Ball sitting there in the middle of that scrum for quite a while. Now Nathan Farles does use the ball off the tail of that scrum. Phil Burley, beautiful offload to a scrum half. Ulster coming in and trying to rip. And here is Roger Wilson to Paul Marshall. Louis Ludic. Sets for Marshall. Coming hard around the corner is Andrew Trimble. Again, signs of Ulster trying to get their, their wingers involved all over the pitch, but there's been a knock forward, and it's been a fairly uneventful first half. That is maybe an understatement. Edinburgh, though, leading by six points to three. It's been enthusiastic, it's been very tight, but it's hardly fizzed, it's hardly... It's not been a first half of raw beauty, but at the same time, it's compelling nonetheless. Particularly interesting staging post for Edinburgh in the early part of this season. Greg Tonk's got them up and running with a big boot. And it's probably fair to say they've had more of the game in the first 40, but the opportunities they have worked have been well snuffed out by Ulster's defence. Both sides' defence looking fairly robust. Tonks again with a long ranger to put them 6-0 up. But uh, Peter Nelson has banged one over to cut the deficit to three. It's been... 
nip and tuck, I think it's fair to say. It's been a stuttering start to the season, what with the breaks that have been taking place because of the World Cup, and perhaps that's reflected in the performance levels. But very, very even in terms of the tail of the tape. Possession almost bang on. Penalties conceded will be hugely frustrating, particularly for Ulster. And a lot of the damage in that department has been done uh, at the breakdown. Neither side really able to give the referee what he's looking for. Tackles made almost level, and the carrying game likewise. Uh, just two difference with Ulster uh, shading that. But they are the ones trailing by six points to three. And it sort of feels, Jan, like it's a bit of a struggle in every sense in that first half. Would that be fair? Well, as much to admire about a defensive um, unity of both sides, they're both very strong. But you touched on it really because the stop to start nature of the season to date, the fluency of the attacking game, I think, has been affected by that. And you see, you see what else is so much to admire about that resolve, that collective resolve we talked about before the game from, from Edinburgh and Ulster alike. You know, when you, when you see that co lack of cohesion in attack, yeah. that's very evident. Ball protection has been really poor and ball retention as a consequence really affects your ability to capitalise on any decent ball you might yeah. have. I just got distracted because the biggest cheer of the night so far has come from someone on a space hopper uh, behind <laughs> us. Perhaps we could get a couple of those into the second half to liven things up a little bit. Will Arsenal, though, I mean, if they're looking at the way that first half has gone, obviously frustrated with performance levels, but perhaps fairly satisfied not to be out of this at the moment, still very much in the equation. Yeah, they'll be disappointed, I think, at, at ruck time. I think Adam have dominated the, the ruck. As, as you can tell by the penalties conceded, they've conceded seven. Usually in a match you only want to concede ten, you're having a good day, they're almost there already. So they want to uh, tidy up that ruck, uh, commit players to it, make sure they retain the ball, because Edinburgh are either slowing the ball down at will or else winning penalties. Hamish uh, Watson has been incredible at the breakdown. Yeah. Uh, he's disrupting everything that Ulster seemed to throw, and that means you can't get into your, your patterns of play and uh, you're always sit, sitting on the back foot. Here comes Watson, yeah. a couple of caps earlier this year, but do you think he's got a big bright future ahead of him, Jan? Oh, I think so. Has anybody epitomised the collective resolve that Edinburgh have shown so far this season? It's him physically being really dominant around the, around the breakdown, strong ball carry. Look at the leg drive here, the ability to get away from the tackler to keep that offload going. At the back they're communicating and go back towards again that unity of the pack. Everyone's talking, forces a penalty from Tui, which they then kick. But again, look at the determination Determination to shrug off that first tackle and I think they went unlucky there to concede a penalty I thought that was fine and it might have been a try to come from it but again the willingness to go in to rip the ball away against a strong opponent well yeah and that's that's been part of Edinburgh's success so far this yeah. season seven's very much the talk of the town in the game of rugby at the moment in terms of this second half though who or how is it going to be taken by the scruff of the neck who is going to come out and make a difference well I, I looked at the bench you know I'm looking at the bench to see if there's a spark there and Ian Humphreys hasn't played a lot of rugby this season but he can provide that spark he's he is uh, played a lot of rugby be at 10 in comparison to Peter Nelson so he may be that spark that Neil Doak may call on around 60 minutes of things uh, need uh, maybe loosened up a wee bit so they can throw the ball around a bit more a bit more of an X factor they seem to be going through their patterns and Edinburgh seem to be uh, on top of them yeah release the handbrake I, I think more is, is it, it's an element for me cohesion get some fluency in the game rather than one spark get some fluency it might be 40 minutes under their belt now there might be that'll be the talk for me in the change rooms now Hold your depth, keep some composure, and wait. At the moment, there's too many people eager for collisions and contact. And you just hold your depth a little bit. In, in a funny kind of way, it hasn't been a game of beauty, as we've been saying, but does it feel like a, a very significant result at stake here? Is it all about just somehow, any, any way, finding the win on a night like this? It's, it's very important in terms of the season. Ulster have a very strong spine that are away at the World Cup at the moment. Whenever they're back, they seem to perform very well away from home. Whenever they're out of the team, they seem to lack that, that cohesiveness, that leadership that Jan's talked about. They want to prove a point that they're capable of going away from home when they don't have their first-line players and still get results. That's what teams do whenever they uh, want to finish at the top of the league, and Ulster have managed to do that consistently over the last few years. Uh, but it's been lacking, certainly in the last sort of six to eight months. Yeah. OK, well, Ulster have had much the better of things in this head-to-head -head in recent years. They won eight of the last ten meetings, as we were saying a little bit later on, a little bit earlier on, excuse me. But they are the ones trailing at half-time. Room for improvement in both changing rooms, I think, will probably be the message. Uh, it is 6-3 to the home side, and we're back with the second half in a minute. Plenty of beast, not much beauty. Made Medusa look like a supermodel. Are we going to turn this into a pretty picture, boys? Yeah, I think it's inevitable uh, with, with both teams that defence was at the forefront of their ideas. They, 
field position was key and Edinburgh won that battle and that's why they are marginally ahead. I think as the defence is tired, opportunities are going to open. So it's about who can take the opportunities when they come. Phil Burley at 10 has looked to be a spark for Edinburgh. He probably plays a little bit too much rugby inside his own half for Alan Solomon's liking, but he could be the guy to light it up for Edinburgh. Well, Chris Dean came down the tunnel after half time with an ice pack clutch to his back, so we'll see no more of him. And number 22 is on the field, and that is Will Hello, who's back from World Cup duty with Tonga. Peter Nelson with the restart for Ulster, well taken by Anton Bresler. And then the metre of leg drive just to set the ball for Nathan Files. That's Mike Coleman, the captain, also captain Edinburgh in the Challenge Cup final against Gloucester, the Twickenham Stoop at the end of last season. Nathan Files with the box kick, nice weight of the box kick. Nick Williams does well with those fingertips on a cold night here in Edinburgh. I'd like to thank Ed, our sound man, for providing us with three hot cups of bacon and lentil soup. A delight. What a man he is. I think from Ulster's point of view, they've got to they've got to clean up the ruck. They've got to try and generate some quick ball to actually attack some gaps in this Edinburgh defence and move this Edinburgh defence around. It's been a bit predictable, but that's been because it's been slow recycled ball. Neil Cochran again to Bresler. Both sides losing one line out apiece in that first half. Here's Phil Burley. And Ulster drifting their defence across the field. To fill the space. There wasn't too much of it there for Edinburgh. Knock on in contact there from the replacement prop, that Grant Shields. Over. Damian Hoyland chasing back after that. And he has Will Hellu in support. Hoyland takes the responsibility himself. And off goes Gilroy to Louis Ludic. Now Andrew Trimble, the man who scored 64 tries for Ulster in those 191 appearances. Rob Herring to Callum Black. Rory Best, one of four Ulstermen playing for Ireland against Argentina on Sunday afternoon in that World Cup quarter-final, taken by Greg Tonks. Six times cap for Scotland. Nathan Howells. <laughs> Files, not Files, Nathan Files, set for him again. Carp Fisherman in his spare time, that's his hobby. Amazing the things you learn at Campton's Runs. Little titbits like that, you know. Up goes Ludic, well taken by the South African who played the Super Rugby final for the Sharks. Has been a really good signing for Ulster, very consistent at fullback for them. Paul Marshall to Nelson, little dab, will it find turf, back goes Files and a sweeping roll, does well and brilliantly recovered by Edinburgh and off goes Phil Burley at pace, his turn to chip but this time it lands into the grateful mitts of Andrew Trimble and then the pick up by Trimble and a little bit of clever footwork as well just to get away from that first tackle now Nelson and again Edinburgh up really quickly on that defensive line But it's an advantage to Ulster, it's a penalty advantage too, and Paul Marshall, he's good at this, he goes quickly. It's always challenging for the defensive side, down goes Tom Brown. In comes Nick Williams, trying to clear Edinburgh players out of the way, and he's done a great job there as Nick Williams, that was power, and here's power personified in Stuart McCluskey. Real opportunity now for Ulster. Can they find some space on the outside? Lewis Stevenson decides to take it into contact. It looked as if they had the numbers to the right Ulster. They might still have the numbers. Here is Louis Ludic going through. And it takes some desperate defence to stop Ulster. Initially, Rob Herring goes for the line. Already a try scorer this season for Ulster. The captain. And the drive and the pop over the line. And the pressure pays off in the end for Ulster and they get the score through Sean Reedy and that was pure persistence. It was indeed cracking attack from Ulster. It was like a chipping contest for much of the attack there. 
but that man comes up with the ball, Sean Reedy, you see here, Phil Burley, who I thought might light this up, chips early, Trimbo does really well and sparks the counter-attack, chips himself, that's how you do it, Phil, there we go, gets the go-forward ball, and from there, Edinburgh end up committing the penalty, Marshall went quickly, trucked on, Edinburgh regathered the ball, Nick Williams managed to generate a turnover, and Sean Reedy says to Paul Marshall, out the way, wee man, I am diving over here. Well, for me, one of the most important parts of that move was the clear out by Nick Williams to, to win that ball back for Ulster deep inside the Edinburgh 22. What you had was also Paul Marshall actually putting pace on the ball, the quick tap. If Ulster can get pace into this game, it just shows you what they can do. And the big rucking and the big ball carrying from Williams and McCloskey did the job. Nelson, difficult kick for the Ulster right half, but he made it look very straightforward indeed and suddenly this match at Murrayfield changes its complexion it does indeed and you touched on it Robbo it was the clear out from Nick Williams Tom Brown did incredibly well to gather the chip through here he is fighting on the ground look at Nick Williams there three boys he arguably goes off his feet beyond the ball but by then the referee gives him the benefit of the doubt because he's got that go forward momentum Craig Gilroy was on the Dream Team last season, the Pro 12 Dream Team, scored 11 tries. A sparkling campaign from Craig Gilroy. And he's uh, begun this one pretty well too, those two tries against Treviso. One really was a classic of its kind. Let's just wonder whether there's been a bit of a message come on as well about just chipping behind this Edinburgh defence, just trying to keep them honest. So Peter Nelson just just putting it behind them, making them turn, and actually quite greasy conditions. It's, it's difficult to, to manage this ball, and actually what it's, it's doing is, again, breaking it up, but maybe in Ulster's favour on this occasion. It is, and it's slippery out there, I think. I think there's obviously this autumnal dew that's come down and made that ball a little bit slippery, but the man who sparked it was Paul Marshall. You said the attack had been a little bit predictable. He knew there was penalty advantage. Said to the referee, Dudley Phillips, I'll take, I'll take it. Took the quick tap and he was off, and he is like dynamite when he goes, and 150th appearance, big moment from him. Edinburgh have got a very poor record against Ulster, winning just one of their last nine. Stay down, six. Marshall. Nice ball for the scrum half to work with, and he has taken advantage of that good ball to advance the Ulster cause up that far touchline. Edinburgh all told have won just two of their last eight games against the Irish provinces. That was last season. And I was talking about their allergy to greens. That's more than an allergy. That's a chronic complaint. He'll have got a good pat, pat on the back from his front five there, lifting their heads from that scrum and seeing them with a, a line-out defence 40 metres from where they were. Rory Lawson wiping away the dribbles from his jowls there, appreciating perfect ball for the scrum half. And here is Files. Taken by Gilroy. Not ten carries for Gilroy. Made ten breaks last week against Treviso. Super game from uh, Gilroy, the Kingspan. Use it! Rob Herring. Marshall again to Peter Nelson. Now Sam Arnold, just 19 years of age. Some good young centres coming through the... Ulster Academy, Jacob Stockdale, another one, who partnered Gary Ringrose in the midfield in the World Junior Championships. Here's Nelson, very much at home as a fullback, but deployed of late as a 10. Strong second half possession from Ulster there, but one thing that has given them the opportunity to do this has been their exit kicking. They've been a lot more efficient. Paul Marshall either kicking to compete on the box. You saw there, obviously, Peter Nelson finding a good touch, and it's that that has given them the opportunity to put this pressure on Edinburgh. Mike 
Coleman takes the ball. Yeah, the ball. No, no, Here it is Hamish Watson, the crazy horse of the first half. What an opening 40 he had. Ulster yet again trying to hold the ball up there in the mall. Lewis Stevenson doing some good work in Edinburgh. Did they get the ball to ground quickly enough? Well, Dudley Phillips decides not. Looks like the ball is on the ground there, but Dudley Phillips thinks he had given Edinburgh time enough. Rob Herring, I think, to, that comes up from there, and all of the Edinburgh players the ball, saying the ball's there, the ball's there. Dudley Phillips very clearly says he was part of the mall, he doesn't have to release it. And obviously, as soon as that mall is called, all bets are off. Even if the ball goes to the ground, the player can lie on it, defending, stop the ball from coming out, and it is a scrum to the defending team, and that's very well done there. Obviously, we saw Hamish Watson bursting off the back of that mall, but he was a little bit high into that collision. And the Ulstermen are very, very good at that choke tackle keeping the ball above the tackle area and turning it into a mall and you see as soon as that mall is called you see here paul marshall does very well initially and there is rob herring straight onto the ball and from there the rest of his team i think it's lewis stevenson there in the second row adding his weight and hamish watson wasn't able to get that ball free and it's an ulster scrum herring did a brilliant job there and no, Hamish Watson, he, he just he got fragmented away from the rest of his pack, so he's on his own, and all of a sudden Herring just comes in, targets that ball, and has got that upper body strength to just make sure that it, that the opponent doesn't hit the ground. I mean, it's, it's excellent play from Ulster's hooker. And we're looking to improve on last season's league position. They were eight from the Pro 12 last season, nine points short of Champions Cup qualification. Recent seasons, they've been consistently average in the Pro 12. 8th, 8th, 10th, 11th, 8th. Haven't made the top six since 2010. Of course, Alan Solomon's project will hopefully see Edinburgh move their way up the table this season. That's a tour clearance from Ulster straight out on the full and gives Edinburgh a chance to maybe build something here. That's what they call the commentator's curse, isn't it? I, I give... Ulster the plaudits for their exit strategy and then off this one here you know the long miss pass puts Tonk pulls Tonks up from fullback and the space is in behind him but Ludic just fell off that one and sliced it into touch and that's a huge frustration hold it hold it wait hooker at the back point replacement Roger Wilson 34 year old flanker goes off and Willie Falloon comes on spent three years at Connacht back at Ulster for a second spell Mike Coleman takes here's Farrells now Andres Strauss runs into and through Peter Nelson Nathan Farrells switches the point of attack to that big blind side Farrells former Seal Sharks player Nathan Farrells Phil Burley, and this is one for Tom Brown to set off in pursuit of, but it was very straightforward, very comfortable for Ulster's most capped player, Andrew Trimble. Good positioning there from Andrew Trimble as well. I think Phil Burley probably looked up, saw there was space there, but Trimble very quick to turn. Phil Burley, Greg Tonks, and now Damien Hoyland, and attempting to make the tackle there was the Ulster replacement Willie Falloon. Alan the Hinchman who came through the Ulster Academy. Here's a Belfast man, born in Belfast, John Andres. He's been around a few clubs as the Edinburgh tight head. Here is Will Hellu in midfield now for Chris Dean and Mike Coleman carries. That's better from Edinburgh. And now it's Phil Burley. Anton Bresler, no Grant Kilchrist, he's with the uh, World Cup squad, he's injured at the moment of course, Grant Kilchrist out of the World Cup, and Ben Toulouse is injured too, Nasi Manu finds Damian Hoyland, attempts to step inside Stuart McCluskey, set for Falls. had a bit of a look up there Nathan Falls, and then kicks the ball straight to an Ulsterman, and it's Craig Gilroy who pivots, but the ball is still in play through Will Hellu, now Phil Burley, what does he see? Oh, that's a difficult ball. 
But Andres Strauss has it now. It was Mike Coleman initially. Oh! The ball rolling around off the palms of his hand. Let go now. It's all got a bit messy in there oh, for yeah. Edinburgh. Fairly slow ball, so they've got to regenerate here. Here is Tonks. Uh, now Hamish Watson and Will Hellu, who started one game for Tonga in the World Cup, and it was in the outside centre position. Here's Nazi Manu, and here's Hamish Watson, and Edinburgh have splintered this Ulster defence at last, and no man deserves a try more than the energetic buzzball that is Hamish Watson. Terrific Edinburgh try there, and Hamish Watson deserving that try, as you say, on the end of what was some fantastic play in the outside channel. Will Hellu comes on off the bench, and he is the creator of this. He gets the ball in the backfield and shows some absolute brilliance. You see here, right in the wide ruck, nice ball, Neil Cochran out the back there, and two wide passes. There's Watson there, that's his first touch. And watch Will Hellu here, in, out, hand off, draws in the winger, ball out the back door. And then the inside ball to Hamish Watson, who's there to finish off. Look at this for a ball out the left hand, out the back door. Very, very good there. Nasimanu does well to take Trimble in, and Watson is over. Fantastic Edinburgh try. Yeah, great score. And as Rory says, created there by Will Hellu. He was seen as a, as a winger this time at Was, Will Hellu. He actually won their, their Players Player of the Year award, Will Hellu, in 2014 yeah, at Wasp. But, but yeah, interesting that in the World Cup playing for Tonga, the Tongan management picked him in the centre against uh, Georgia in his only start. Yeah, it is interesting. And obviously, he's it's not a position that I'm accustomed to seeing him in, given he's a wing for Wasp. But I tell you what, he's a dangerous runner. Good conversion by Greg Tonks, and uh, it seems like a rugby match has broken out. Well, Craig Gilroy was put in a difficult position here. He rushed in to try and close off that wide pass, but then had a high tail it back out into the flanks, and it was his missed tackle that actually proved crucial and created. It went from a two-on-two -two to a two-on-one, and brilliant execution from Edinburgh, but that, that's just a missed tackle that's led to that, and, uh, you know, these mistakes cost points. Yeah, okay. Yep. Three and one. Three and one. Okay. Okay. Well, also making some front row replacements here. Andrew Warwick coming on 17 Bronson Ross is on wearing 18 Bronson Ross who spent a spell playing his rugby in Edinburgh for Burramure which is just up the road here from Murrayfield so those oh and Masu when it came off the foot there no knock on didn't judge the flight of the ball terribly well here is Files Use it. The leg position well spread apart there. Always suggest the box kick. It's gone a long way though, and here's Nick Williams. Can Ulster open up on this massive tranche of turf on this side of the field? In goes Andrew Trimble, hard, powerful, straight. One of uh, Joe Schmidt's favourites, but uh, injury hindered him in the build up to the World Cup. That was that a knock on by Peter Nelson? Play on. Marshall. Take by Louis Lewick. Marshall again. That little hooked ball. Getting the ball tumbling over and tumbling into contact goes Andrew Trimble. Good vision from Marshall. New Brown was up on the line, just popped it in behind him, put him on all, under all sorts of pressure, particularly when you got the physicality of Trimble bearing down on you. And obviously, again, a lot of kicking to compete in the second half, particularly in that middle third. And it was Marshall's high ball, reclaimed by, I think it was Louis Ludic, and immediately, because the back three man, Tom Brown, had been pulled up for that challenge, the opportunity was in behind, and Marshall very sharp onto it to put it in behind. You see, this is the first of the box kicks. 
it probably doesn't go quite as far as Marshall would like it, but Ludic rises highest, and suddenly there's mass real estate in behind. Brown does well to recover and get back, but Ulster forced the knock on. I think it was called from Nathan Farrells. Super field position this for Ulster. And they have forced the penalty out of this Edinburgh pack. Um, pretty straightforward kicking position this for Ulster if they decide to go for the points. And Peter Nelson there just looks towards his captain, Rob Herring. And Rob Herring said, three points? We can do better than that. Sounds a little bit topical, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's certainly a much, much easier decision to take when you've got over 20 minutes left. Oh, you would never take the kick for a draw, would you? Give me time to count I need it as well. So it was Rob Herring's decision, so he's got to find his line-out jumper, which he does do. And it's Lewis Stevenson who takes the ball. And here goes the ball, and... Uh, well, truck, truck and trailer, you've got to stay bound that it's one of the... Yeah, it's one of the directives from World Rugby that players must stay attached. Say again. Just a minute, please, lads. One message at a time. Red three, get him off the arm at the scrum. Sorry, now, Bob. He was very, very clear in his call there. Disengage, disengage, and as a result... Very, very clear in his decision. It is accidental offside, but the man who bound onto the ball disengaged from the mall, and therefore the man in front of him was an accidental obstruction. Well, Lou Ludic comes off, so a bit of reshuffling in the Ulster back line. Peter Nelson goes to full back, and back after his hamstring injury is Ian Humphreys. Toulouse against La Rochelle. 10 8 to Toulouse is the latest score behind the red button. All the points so far. From another out half, Toby Flood. Breve against Toulon, tomorrow 140, Sky Sports 5, also in the top 14. What do you think about that call, Rory, in terms of you're three points down, you've got over 20 minutes to play. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't out by the touchline. It's a big call. It was between the five and it was probably 10 metres in from the left touchline. Obviously, the wrong touchline if there is such a thing for Peter Nelson and his left foot. But at the same time, he struck the ball so nicely tonight. I think he's uh, he's certainly two from two um, this evening. So I think for me, I, I, I even the scores up, and you and you try and get back into the Edinburgh half and keep the scoreboard ticking over. Easy to say, obviously, when you don't come away with points. Crouch. Ian Humphreys on, who, who damaged his hamstring actually against Edinburgh in a pre-season friendly at Golden Acre in the uh, pre-game warm-up. Ulster winning a penalty off the last scrum and conceding a penalty off this one. And as we wait for the restart, let's join Graham Simmons to get... Let's not join Graham Simmons, not yet. We will keep you in suspense whether he's right or wrong Dudley Phillips has been very clear to both sides this evening on his communication as to what he's going to allow what he's not going to allow and that one there Rob Herring had a word with him as captain as the hooker in that front row but he said I was very clear in my decision driving in on the angle Cochran, Cornell Dupre is on, back off that terrific uh, leg break against the Dragons almost a year ago to the day, he was out for six months Nathan Files, Andres Strauss he's a very direct runner, direct ball carrier is Andres Strauss this is Bresler another South African born player in this Edinburgh squad he's put a cosmopolitan look this Edinburgh side in terms of nationalities plenty of New Zealanders in there too Tongue and Will Hellu and here is Hellu the man who helped set up that try he certainly made the incisive move and he's got the offload away there to the try scorer in Hamish Watson 
ninth carry for Watson and a try. And they've been in the main good carries as well. Fouls. Strauss is chasing. Here's Nelson. Out Craig Gilroy. Haven't seen any of his classic spirals so far today. Keeping those well hidden at the moment. Oh, that's poor for Munster there. Complete confused in the midfield. Hamish Watson gets hand punched away, open palmed by Stuart McCluskey. Here is Phil Burley. Runs into Ulster's try score, Sean Reedy. And now the suspense is over. We can hear from Graham Simmons, who's talking to Steve Scott. Thanks for the big build up, Robert. Yeah, what are the do's and don'ts of closing out this game now, Steve, from an Edinburgh perspective? Yeah, the big thing for us in through the game, we've gave uh, too many silly errors away. I think we need to close the errors down. I think we need, as I said earlier in the show, we need to keep well disciplined. They need to keep all the, the ball in the right areas of the field. And to what extent are you in the coaching panel up here trying to read what Ulster are doing? I mean, we've seen Humphreys come on, Nelson got a full back. To what extent are you trying to counteract what they're doing and trying to work out what they're doing and get things right from your point of view? Yeah, they've made some changes. They brought some front rowers on as well there. So I think we've got a good bench as well. So hopefully our bench will make a better impact than theirs. But as I say, it's a, it's a crucial time in the game now with 20 minutes to go. We were, we're leading this. We need to just to, to hold on and, and get the result here. Hold on or go out and get some more, Steve? Yeah, you have to keep, have to keep going at them. Definitely keep going at them. Thank you for your time. Interesting that, you know, do you continue to attack and, and build a lead? We've seen teams in the World Cup sometimes trying to defend the narrow lead and, and it costing them in the end. Five tries for Connacht, they've got their bonus point at home to Zebra and Glasgow, the champions who've struggled in the early part of this season, leading the Dragons 22-10, Scarlet's on fire again. Two tries for DTH van der Merwe to add to the four he scored for Canada in the World Cup. What an autumn DTH has had. What I loved about Stevie Scott's comment there was, obviously Simo said to him, Peter Nelson's gone to fullback, they brought on Ian Humphreys, what do you think about that? He says, they've made a couple of changes in the front row. Twice, twice, twice. <laughs> on the arm. Well, they're starting to dominate the scrum here, because that's a, a second consecutive penalty in that phase, and Ulster have now conceded eight penalties and I think that's the fifth penalty they've conceded in their own half and you don't want to be doing that not when you've got a guy that can kick the ball like Greg Tonks can he has been striking the ball incredibly nicely tonight and obviously 100% uh, three from three this evening and again an it's a very calm board? night out here tonight the, the flags the above Murrayfield aren't even fluttering an inch so he would certainly have the legs I'd say on this kick it's all about whether he can split the edge. Big high pressure system sitting over Scotland, which I enjoyed last week. Bit of Munro bagging there in the Northwest Highlands up another pool. It is one country you live in here, Rory Lawson, you lucky man. I thought you were looking tan, Robbo. <laughs> Wind scoured, I think it is. It was a bit breezy. But beautiful, great visibility. Sun was out most of the time. No, can Greg Tonks bag another one here? Sorry about the pun. I'm not really. Kicking well. Bizarre game here last season when Tom Heathcote missed six kicks out of ten. It pretty much cost Edinburgh the victory that night. But Greg Tonks looks like he's not going to make the same sort of errors on this occasion. Beautiful strike, keeps that momentum going and the scoreboard ticking over and Tyrone, as you touched on, Ulster have obviously gone from having a penalty inside Edinburgh's half to conceding three, six-point shift in a game as tight as this, sees Edinburgh with that six-point lead now. Yeah, and they've now got to chase a converted score, which you know, that, that extra three points difference makes a big... Well, I suppose bringing Humphreys on, mind you, you do know that you're going to be playing a bit more a creative and expansive game. You are going to be chasing more points, but just mentally you know you've got to dot the ball down rather than just maybe get those two penalties. It's a, it's a slightly different mindset going into the last 14, 15 minutes. Well, you certainly gain in creativity with Ian Humphreys. You might lose a little bit in defensive solidity. 
He's not renowned for being the biggest defender in the world, but he does add a little bit of magic when he's on the pitch. He can always, he's always talking to everybody around him. He's looking for gaps. He's got a real in instinct uh, for gaps and, and where the space is on the pitch. And also people then have to read off him because you take your eyes off him and he will do something pretty unusual. But equally, it, it does offer up opportunities to the opposition because it is definitely a, it's a softer channel than going at Stuart McCloskey. There's no question about that. But he can sprinkle magic, no doubt about that, Ian Humphreys. And uh, Leicester know that, so do London Irish, where he had a spell, his third spell at Ulster for Ian Humphreys. The younger brother of the Gloucester director of rugby, David Humphreys. David Humphreys, a, a World Cup player for Ireland, four Ulster men in the Irish team to play Argentina, Rory Best, Ian Henderson, Chris Henry and Tommy Bow. There were some who thought in this parish, or the Ulster parish, that Joe Schmidt might have played Henderson at six to, uh, to add a bit of ball-carrying whoomph to that uh, Irish side, and maybe put Dominic Ryan into the second row. But uh, Schmidt knows what he's doing, certainly seemed to against France when Ireland played superbly in that second half. That is Sam Arnold who carries, and now Lewis Stevenson. Marshall to Reedy. Oh, another error from Ulster, turning the ball over, giving it away. Tom Brown is on the chase with Will Heller. Sixth handling error from Ulster in this game. Peter Nelson downfield, and now Nassi Manu. Cornell Dupre. Phil Burley, always plenty of space over on that far side. Ian Humphreys has to sprint hard and fast to get across to the ball. And the ball outruns everybody, but there was acreage over there to be exploited by Edinburgh. Well, if you wonder whether Ian Humphreys is fit or not from that hamstring, he had to absolutely haul himself right across the pitch there. Edinburgh undoubtedly winning this tactical kicking challenge, and actually the tactic in the game altogether, as, as you touched on, they've, they've managed to find a little bit of space within the Ulster defence. Uh, you see Phil Burley here, obviously coming from an attacking opportunity, finds that space, but generates that field position. And Edinburgh have looked for the short sides. You picked up on it early in the game. They've, they've kept the Ulster defence guessing. And in contrast to that, Ulster have played the same way for the majority of their attack tonight. You just pointed out on the far side there, there's probably 30 metres of width in which there are two Edinburgh defenders because they know that there's no other, there's no secondary threat coming back down that blind side from Ulster, and it's it's had them a little bit hamstrung. Well, the Ulster captain's off, Rob Herring, and uh, John Andrew has replaced him. Edinburgh losing a man too. John Andrew, he's sort of the Sean Cronin of, uh, of the Ulster side. He's got great pace as he showed against the Ospreys. And uh, coming on for Edinburgh is George Turner, replacement hooker, 23 year old. A hooker for a loose head prop, though, yeah. obviously. Well, well Dudley Phillips. You're just making sure they have a. Un unable to fulfil. You've lost your two, your two loose heads. Yeah. You have to go to uncontested. Got 14 players. It's tactical momentum. It's injured, so you have to have a player on. No. Well, I think what was happening there was they're, they're out of props, and they were saying that George Turner could play loose head, okay, and he was on. certainly suggesting Time he could on. play loose head. Man down. And Dudley Phillips says no, you've got to no, play with a man down. You've got to play with a man down. Maintain scrum reduce your man down. Yeah. 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 No. But that's through injury. Yeah. I mean, th there's certainly confusion on the Edinburgh bench. And they feel they were doing the right thing, but wait, no, wait. Dudley Phillips was very firm in his decision there. So problems for Edinburgh. 
Paul Marshall. Damian Hoyland to Phil Burley. That's good work from Tom Brown. And we're looking to get a good clear out going there. Nathan Files, and it's the replacement prop forward is on Simon Bergen. And the carry from Nasi Manu. Tenth carry for Nasi Manu, the former Highlanders captain. And I can see below me all sorts of uh, deep discussions on the Edinburgh bench and involving their management and fourth officials. Here is Tom Brown, hit hard by Peter Nelson, but Tom Brown does well to get away from that initial clutch from Peter Nelson, who's now playing at fullback. Nathan Fowles runs into trouble. Bergen's a big man, picks up here and goes. Bergen, who's six foot three and twenty stone, Christchurch born man from the Canterbury Academy. An advantage here to Edinburgh, so free play. Will Hello, creator of that try, and away he goes again. And Hello almost getting his way into the open spaces. Here is Hamish Watson. Another great demonstration there of leg drive by Hamish Watson. He really is in fabulous form. You can see Alan Solomons has come down from the box there. He looks absolutely apoplectic. George Turner still standing by, hopeful of coming on. That's okay, that's changed after what they said a few minutes ago. That's fine, they said a few minutes ago that he wasn't. Okay. That's, so if you're telling me he's a, he's a loose, that's okay. Yes, yes. Well, now George Turner is allowed on, but, yeah, uh, but I think that they have to take off. Well. Yeah, Neil Cochran goes off, or does he stay on? So if George Turner's on, he's going to play loose head, isn't he? I think one or the other. Oh, we need someone intelligent to work all this out. Who can I think of who can explain this in a sensible way? As Greg Tonks kicks the penalty and misses it this time. Stay and Ulster tucking. launch Stop. it away. Stop. I found an intelligent man who can explain what's happening. Graham Simmons, over to you. You keep giving me the big build up, <laughs> don't you? Not gonna... <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. As I understand it, Alan Solomons, as you, as you rightly pointed out, Mark, came down uh, to take charge of a situation. He was going to be faced with uncontested scrums and only 14 players on the pitch. He's grabbed hold of George Turner, the replacement hooker, and said he will play loose head prop. It's as you said it a few seconds ago, Robert. You will play loose head prop, and he is now on. So Edinburgh are at 15, and George Turner will play at prop. Good luck to him. Thank you, Sky Sports Whoa! Brains no, Trust. No, no, no. Now we understand. Stop. You now can then. scrummish lo loose head One prop, stop. can't you, George? <laughs> of course I can. Been doing it for years. <laughs> Scrum the Ulster. Now, again, they've worked really hard in there to turn over the ball. I mean, there is potentially a safety aspect here as well, mind you, if you're playing a hooker out of position. And, uh, I mean, good. arguably, if in doubt, you should be going to uncontested scrums. Guys, we're back to contest. We know, no. You've a loose head. I've been told he's a loose head. Well, Dudley Phillips is happy now that Edinburgh have provided an adequate loose head in the replacement, George Turner. And if they hadn't been able to do that, then they would have had to play with 14 men. Yes. It's not my decision. Crouch! 
Find. Set. <laughs> and the, the first thing that they, the new Edinburgh front row, oh, fortified by George Turner Dawes, is, is win a penalty. Look, it did look as if George Turner plummeted to turf there, but Dudley Phillips decides that it's a, a penalty. Sorry, it, 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 as I said, it looked like George Turner plummeted to turf straight away. You're talking about the safety issue. He did seem to go to ground very easily indeed, and Ulster, Ulster got the penalty. Yeah, you see here on the on the engage is bind slips. I mean, whether that's an inexperienced thing or whether that is just a genuine slip of the bind, he's ended up on the ground. It's an easy penalty for the referee to give. Thunder Burley, the line out take here is Stuart McCluskey. Really, Ulster trying to get their main man Stuart McCluskey into the game. It's another error in the middle of the park from Ulster. There's been a few spills in that department. Tackle move. Carry from Willie Falloon. Here's Marshall to Nick Williams. Tackle from George Turner. Carry from Van de Merva. And goes Marshall. Ian Humphreys with the inside ball to Peter Nelson. He's hit by Anton Bresler. Two team tackle there from Edinburgh. Now Willie Falloon. Marshall to McCluskey. Andreas Strauss comes up on his opposite number, knowing that giving McCluskey room to move and room to offload is not a particularly good idea. Now it's Marshall for Humphreys, that switch ball for Craig Gilroy. Dupre brings him down, and it's another spill by Ulster in possession. But there was no knock on, and they've managed to, to win the ball back there. Bronson Ross carries for Ulster. And here's Marshall to Humphreys. Now Craig Gilroy, Peter Nelson outside him. Andrew Trimble on this near touchline. Ball going. doesn't get quite as far as Trimble. Here's Marshall again to Ian Humphreys. Carried once more by Bronson 18, Ross. 18. And there's been a knock forward. It was Phil Burley who came in there trying to wrestle the ball back for Edinburgh and Ulster need this converted try very urgently indeed. Time is off. Ulster finishing fourth last season, undone by a Scottish 1-2, ironically. One and two, both inflicted by Glasgow. Ulster beaten twice at Scotston. First in round 22 and then in the semi-finals. Real chance missed for Ulster last season with the final in Belfast. Time is on. But unfortunately for them, they didn't make it there. It was Glasgow and Munster who finally did with Glasgow winning the decider in some style too. But uh, both Scottish sides making finals last season. Edinburgh... Very impressive with the quarter-finals and semi-finals of the Challenge Cup, winning at London Irish, and then putting away the uh, Newport Gwent Dragons here quite comfortably before losing a, a pretty tight game on the scoreboard against Gloucester at the Twickenham Stoop. Now can George Turner hold his side up here this time? The emergency loose head for Edinburgh. Dudley Phillips says we go again. Look, the, the, the scrum did go down again on the Turner side. As we wait for the reset, it's time for the boys beside me, Tyrone Howe and Rory Lawson, to tell us who their man of the match is. Well, it's a precarious position where this scrum is with three minutes to go, but if Edinburgh win this game, the, there has been a standout man within that. The guys to step up for them, Greg Tonks, 100% record with his conversions he's missed a couple of long rangers as the game's gone on nasi manu a big ball carrier and will hell an impact off the bench but the standout this evening has been hamish watson at number seven he's had 12 carries 12 tackles and he has been a constant nuisance at the breakdown and he is our guinness pro 12 man of the match is he going to be on the winning side though there's still an opportunity here for ulster as nick williams drives Paul Marshall now, down this big blind side, Ian Humphreys looks for support on the inside from Stuart McCluskey. 
And Edinburgh trying to get over the top of this ball here, but Ulster have it. Lewis Stevenson drives well inside the Edinburgh 22. Now, here is Marshall. This is Andrew Warwick. Marshall again. Can somehow Ulster fashion some space here as Sam Arnold goes into contact. And Andre Strauss does some phenomenal work in there. In the mall situation. Ulster did it several times to Edinburgh earlier in the game. And now it's Edinburgh who respond by a turnover of their own. And that could well be the critical turnover of this game. You said it. It was Andre Strauss and his sidekick this evening in that mall, creating that mall and holding up. Hamish Watson, our man of the match, he was right on it there. The tackle was made, he was second man in, held that, turned it up in, into a mall and it has highlighted his match. Look at him, you see top of the tree when it comes to carries. He won't be far off top of the tree when it comes to tackles. He's dotted down for Edinburgh in that key try and he is uh, the, he's been the outstanding player this evening. There he is, binds on, holds the ball up from behind there holding Sam Arnold up, Maul called, Crunch. scrum Edinburgh and a sigh of relief. relief. Five, In a game that has not been blessed with a great deal of quality, he's been absolutely outstanding. And also a real unsung hero, George Turner in this scrum. I mean, a hooker coming on to play loose head, that's a serious challenge and he's done very well. You'd have thought in the middle of the, the 22 there, also attack would have really turned the screw. He's done exceptionally well in the short time he's been in the pitch. I loved it, he came on, smiled and said, live scrums boys, let's do this. And he's, as you said, he held that last scrum well. This is obviously a pressure scrum, but one, you see 30 seconds of this game to go. It's not going to be far off over by the time the ball comes out, if it comes out. And he's got a key part still to play. He just needs to hold this one up, doesn't he, George Turner? Can he stay on his feet long enough? And the ball does go down on the George Turner side. And there is time for Ulster here with 10 seconds on the clock. Yep, time to go for the corner, says Dudley Phillips. And this is the moment. He's been able to hold those scrums on the engage, but it's when that secondary pressure comes, the last couple of scrums, through that tight head side, and, and he's obviously on the loose head that he's, he's hit a knee, and it was an easy call again for Dudley Phillips. John Andrew, big throw for the youngster. On for the skipper. Taken by Stevenson. Edinburgh driving hard, trying to disrupt and spoil this ball. Can Ulster form a strong drive here? Franco van der Merwe in possession. Fraser McKenzie wrestling in there, so too Anton Bresler. And, and have they done it again? They have absolutely superb grafting work in there.